this is Rick with Cybermedics, and we're here today to talk about Windows Data Backup. So we'll get there through the control panel, go down to the start, click Control, select Windows Backup and Restore. We'll select File History. We have a previous video that we did on file history, how to use it to do time date stamped backups of versions for your files. So it basically is keeping date copies of your files as they change over time. So that video is above. Today we're going to detail out the hard drive backup capability of Windows. We're running this under Windows 11, but it's similar to Windows 10. Your schedule may be turned off when you first come in. If that's the case, then you're going to want to turn on the schedule right here. Once you turn on the schedule, you can come in here to change settings. And we have an external hard drive plugged in through the USB port on the computer. That is the drive right there. Select Next. And then you decide what you want to have backed up. The easiest thing to do is just to say, let Windows choose Recommended. Select Next. It will back up all the user library files. It will create a system image. And as far as protecting yourself from data loss, that's really all you need to do. Save Settings and Exit. Now we'll come back in here and ch click Change Settings again. We'll say Next. You can also say Let Me Choose. And in that case, you can choose what data profiles you want backed up and include a system image of the operating system of the hard drive. So you can click Off. You can open these up individually and decide what file libraries you want to back up. We're just doing this for demonstration purposes. So if you want to just select one of the file libraries, let's say you just recently had a bunch of documents updated or pictures, you can also drill down into the computer through the C drive. You might have program files that you have installed that you want to keep a copy of, depending upon what those program files are. You may want to also keep copies of your program data. So this just lets you individually select it. Like I said, at the very first setting, back up everything. But if you want to determine for yourself what gets backed up, this is an easy way to do that. So I'm going to deselect these, roll this back up. For this purposes, we're just going to back up the file library under this profile for the documents. And we'll say Next. Once you do that and you decide what you want to back up, you can change the schedule here. So how often, and you want to make sure that, you know, my recommendation is the hard drive is plugged in all the time. That way it's always available. And you want to pick whether, you know, you, how many how often do you have changes on your data, right? That will determine whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly. What days do you typically use the computer? You know, decide, you know, when you want to. So if you pick, if you pick daily, then you don't have to pick what day, but if you pick weekly, then it's going to want to know what day you're going to do it. Pick a time that you're typically on the computer and then say run backup on schedule as recommended. Okay, so we say okay and save settings and exit. All right. So now that we've set up the time and we've set up what data we want, we can select the backup now and it will back up the data. Okay, so now that it has completed the backup, you have a copy of whatever files you had selected. You can also individually come in and say, create a system image. If you want to do that, if you just wanted to create an image of the hard drive itself, and it's a copy of 
the drivers required for Windows to run. So you're basically the operating system to reconstitute the Windows system would be backed up. So you can do that if you decide you want to do that. You can also create a system repair disk. This is going to be on a DVD, but because this system doesn't have a DVD, it's going to say it could not do that. I recommend that you, you create a system restore USB instead because it has more of the utilities and capabilities to reconstitute your system. All right, so now that we've set up the configuration of the Windows backup, we'll go through the restore my files. We can just click the restore my files here. And it's a little confusing because you can browse for files or you can browse for folders. So it, we'll just select browse for folders first. And really what I should do, let me cancel out of this because there's a part here that I, I skipped here where it says choose a different date. So as you make these backup copies, it's going to keep a historical copy of them. And if for some reason you wanted to go back to a earlier date, you could do that. So you can say last week, last month, last 12 months. So you pick whichever one you want. Normally it'll be the most current one if you're restoring files. So you say, okay. And once you select the date backup that you want, you can also click search if you wanted to search for a particular file. And like I said, you can browse for files or browse for folders. So we'll select browse for folders. When you do that, you're just going to be drilling in through the C drive, user profiles, you can select your user profiles, documents. So that's what I was saying. What's confusing about this when you say search for folders, when you click into a folder, it's like there's nothing there. Well, there's nothing there because you're literally drilling down into a folder. So you won't see files when you go into it. So when you're searching for folders, you basically need to know what folder your data was in and you pick that particular folder. But now if you want to search for files, you come in here and you go into the users and we'll go into documents, select documents. Now you see you have you have files inside of that. So if you go into, let's see, videos. So now you can see the actual files that are in, in that particular folder. So it just depends on, cancel out of this, it depends on whether you want to search for something, you want to browse for folders, or you want to browse for files. So once you do that, you select it, you can you can restore. Let's just do this for real. Um, let's go into C. Let's go users. This is where we do the YouTube uh, videos. So let's go into videos and let's drill down into here and let's just pick one. And let's just pick a screenshot thing. And let's say next. Now, Notice it says all files will be stored to their version backed up on this date. So you have to be careful with this because if you're restoring these files and the and the data is different from the date when you backed it up, it's going to override it and put this this backed up data onto your system. That's why the file history capability is much more powerful because it keeps time date stamped versions of the files. This is an instance in time and if what's on your hard drive is is not the most current or is the most current and you override it, then it, you're just going to lose the data. So select next. Now, you can say in the original location or you can change the location to try to prevent that from being a problem. If you're not sure whether it's the latest data, you probably want to pick an alternate location and, and do that. But in this case, we'll just say the original location and we'll restore it. And it says the file's already there, so it does do a check. And you could look at the, the file sizes. So we're going to say, go ahead. You can say copy and keep both files, don't copy, or copy and replace. We'll just go ahead and do the copy and replace just to go through the process. And then you can click 
view your restored files. And there you go. That's the directory and where the screenshot was at. So we'll close that down. We'll just select finish. Okay, so you can, no, that was we clicked restore my files. Now we can say restore all user files if you want. And this would be for all users. And you can browse for files again or choose a different date just like before. So just so you understand, when you say restore my files, it's drilling down into the profile that you're in. If you say restore all user files, it's looking through all, all profiles. Yeah, in the process of doing this video, I tell you I have this backup program with Windows is somewhat confusing in the way that information is presented. There's probably better tools available for backup. This will do in a pinch, though. Um, one of the things that's confusing is when you when you click Manage Space and you say View Backups, you can see there's three, four, five backups listed on here right so there's only five backups listed but if i close out of this and i come back and i say restore let's say restore all user files and i say choose a different date there's not only five backups if i select all there's there's a bunch of backups on here way more than five there's one two three four different dates so maybe Maybe it does make sense. Let's go back out of here. Four different dates. Manage space. View the backups. I think that's what it is. This is this is not letting you know that there's multiple, except for this one, for the last one. Maybe the most current one, it keeps multiple dates. And the rest of them, it doesn't show you that. So that's probably what the disconnect is. When you click restore files over here, as we went through it earlier, this is where you can say a different date and you can say browse for folders. And it's C drive, I, I misspoke earlier. This does list all the users here. So we'll get out of this, close this down. See, I don't know what the difference when I look at restore my files and restore all user files. You come back in, I mean, it's the same same process, browse for folders. There's the C drive, there's all the users. So I don't really see a difference on how you drill in this where it says restore my files or restore all user files. Down here, you can say select another backup to restore files from. By default, it's defaulting to the most current one. But what is interesting here is, as I have plugged this drive into other machines, you will find records of those backups on here. So that is important. Let me go over that again. When it says select another backup, it's going to then go on to the hard drive. And if you've restored, or I should say backed up files from a different computer, so the faster than speeding bullet, those are different computers. The one here is Clark Kent. So you'll see, you'll be able to pick those. So if you were migrating data from one computer to another computer, this is where you would want to select that. Okay, so that concludes the video demonstration. Let's just do a little recap, um, just so that, because that was a lot of stuff to go through. I'm going to just walk through the most simple process to get your data protected. Come in here, turn on the schedule. That's what you want to do. Turn on the schedule. Once you've turned on the schedule, you can go in here and you can say, uh, change the settings. Okay. So, Make, this will be your hard drive that's connected externally to your computer. Next, simplest thing is to say, let Windows choose. Next, it will back up all users, create a system image, 
All of your data will be backed up all the time. You come in here to the schedule, make sure you pick how often and what day and what time so that when you're using the computer, the data is going to be backed up. Once you do that, you say save settings and exit, run your backup and you're done. That's all there is to it. It's really that simple. There's a lot of different options in here located in different places, but that's basically it. The other thing to remember to keep in mind is if you have data from a different computer that you're migrating, a different backup that you've done from a different computer, this is where you will select that down here, select another backup to restore files from. We'd be really interested in any backup software that you've used that you think is better than Windows. What has your experience been with the backup and restore recovering data? Have you used it to do that? Please let us know if you have any questions or comments. Hope you will consider subscribing and have a great and wonderful automation day.